Hi everyone, Stepan here. Uh, I'm going to show you the round 4 game from the European Amateur Chess Championship. Now, this game is specific because I had no time to prepare. Uh, and when you have no time to prepare in a serious classical tournament, especially when the time control is with added time after move 40, at least for me that's a big handicap because I like preparing. Uh, my opponent is, uh, I, I'm gonna say, 50 years old. So usually in, in tournaments like this, younger people prepare more and more often and in more detail. And and th th that's just what's most commonly true. It doesn't have to be true in this case. Older people tend to play the same stuff over and over again which makes them easier to prepare for and it makes it less likely to have a surprise occur on the board. So, uh, round 3, which you could have seen in the last video, was played in the morning at 9.30. Round 4 was scheduled for 4 p.m. Uh, I came home after round 3 and was waiting for the pairings to get out for the rounds to finish. And all the, all the games were uh, live, you could, you could watch them live on several websites. So at around 2 p.m. I started looking at one endgame, which was still going on. It was a dead draw. I think it was Rook and Bishop versus Rook. And they just wouldn't agree to a draw. They just played on and on and on. And in the end, I had to leave my house because it was 3 p.m. already. Had no idea who I was playing. So I'm walking to a place where I'm going to meet my friend who is driving us to the playing venue. The pairings get out at around... I don't know, 3.30 or 3.40, something like that. And I see that I'm playing this gentleman here, and the only thing I could see is that I have the white pieces, that uh, against e4 he plays a ton of stuff, against d4 he usually plays Benoni-type setups with the early c5. And as you're going to see in the next few games, I started playing d4, c4 uh, as my main repertoire. My next game with white, I played d4, c4. I wanted to play it in this game as well, but I had no time to prepare. So, since he plays a lot of stuff against e4 and several different things against d4, I decided to play d4. And when he played c5, I really had no idea whether against d5 he would play the Czech Benoni or the modern Benoni or the Benko. I, as I said, had no time to prepare, so I played c3. And after d5, uh, I played knight f3, and after knight f6, my intention was uh, to go into lines with bishop g5, but I'm not too familiar with knight e4. Uh, I just don't know a lot about that, so I was going to play g3. In the end, I decided to play bishop f4. Because that's a setup I'm comfortable with. Now, this really isn't a good London system. I don't think it's a London system at all. We are transposing to a position that's bad for white. Black is already better. He knows what he's doing. But since I had no time to prepare, I decided it was the best thing to do was to play a setup you're familiar with, even if it's not the most aggressive one. Alternatively, I, I wanted to play g3 here. And after e6, bishop to g2, uh, I don't even know what to call this. Uh, I think it's a reverse Grunfeld. Uh, but again, I don't really know what I'm doing here, because I haven't played the Grunfeld a lot, and my opponent has been playing the same setup for 30 years. So bishop f4. Now, we get this position, which is better for black, simply. I've had this with both colors before, and this is a forced line. You cannot take the bishop because queen b2. Uh, so queen c1 and h6. Uh, other moves are possible. e6 is better than h6 in my opinion, but this is all fine. And here's the reason why black is better here. Uh, black is better because he can play queen d8 and b5. Before white has time to consolidate his queen side, uh, play b3 and develop his pieces. And there is nothing white can do about that. But the, the break with b5, b4 has to come quickly. Otherwise, white is going to play b3 and more than equalize. Uh, the other idea for white is to go for e4, which isn't possible at the moment. Okay, so h3, I need to save my bishop. e6, knight bd2. And here my opponent, I believe, made a big mistake. 
he played a very natural looking rook c8 uh, after which i was really happy uh, after rook c8 I, I i have been given more time uh, in this position i think already he, he either has to play bishop e7 and castle or queen d8 which i would have played instantly if i had the black pieces now i have to play bishop e2 and he plays b5 and already it's it's impossible to prevent b4 from happening i'm gonna have a weakness on c3 obviously in conjunction with the weak e4 square this should be a small advantage to black but he played rook c8 by the way excuse the noises outside i, I uh, came to visit my parents there are a lot of people here okay bishop e2 bishop e7 castles castles and again instead of castling probably he should have continued queen d8 but he castled and here uh, since i did everything i wanted to do i played b3 and i thought this has to be good and th there isn't really a way to defend the c4 pawn so i thought he had to take on b3 uh, and he thought that too and in fact there's one game play played from this position between two 2400 players where black played c takes b3 after which white is white has a very pleasant position but there's a crushing move here uh, against which i have no idea what i would have done i actually found this in my own analysis when i was trying to figure out why he didn't play queen d8 and in this position you can pause the video and try to find a good uh, a good move for black it's uh, I, it's not too hard to see but the follow-up and the calculation required, I think, is 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 hard. Okay, so so the move is queen a5, and the idea is not well. It, it is to put pressure on c3, but uh, there's another more important idea behind it, which is why I think that the move is hard to see. So you you take on c4. That's the critical line. So what happens? B takes c4. The idea is bishop to a3. And after bishop a3, you don't really have any good moves. Uh, you have no way to keep defending your c3 pawn. And your queen cannot go to, to b1 to put pressure on b7. So the only move I could find is knight b3. Uh, just uh, attacking black's queen in return. But after queen a4, I don't see a move for white. For example, queen to d2, just dc4. And I think the only move is knight c5. And after bishop c5, dc5, this probably has to be winning for, for black. Uh, so b3 is a mistake because of queen a5. I, I don't know what the engine says exactly. Let, let's see. After queen a5, it says minus 0 0.7. And you cannot take on c4. You, you should play b4. But if you play b4, then... I, I mean where is your play i think it's going to be extremely hard to prepare e4 i'm going to play have to play something like bishop d1 bishop c2 that being said had he played queen a5 i would have taken a long time to think about this luckily for me he played cb3 and after a b3 i'm really happy okay so the critical move here uh and he had a long think uh is is knight to b4 and the idea behind knight b4 is that you want to win the bishop pair and you want to win white's good bishop, the one on e2. So against this, you can play c4, uh, which I'm not sure I would have done. I think I would have played queen to b2. Both are fine. Uh, and after knight to d3, I don't want to ruin my pawn structure, have to move my queen again. So bishop takes, bishop takes, and rook to c1. Now, white's light squares are extremely weak. On the other hand, I have some pressure on the queen side, my rooks are perfectly placed, and I am going to be able to play e4 in the future. Especially uh, with ideas like knight e1 with tempo, and f3 and e4. I don't think uh, black can prevent that in any, in any sensible way. Okay, uh, but he played knight a5, which is actually a waste of tempo. Uh, it attacks the pawn on b3, but my queen wants to be on b2 anyway. So I just play queen b2. My f rook belongs on, c on c1. So knight a5 I don't think is a good move. Uh, it's just now I think white has a big advantage. Because this knight is misplaced. Eventually it's going to have to move again. I could consider playing 
a move like queen a2 straight away, just chasing the knight away to c6 and uh, playing c4. So he played a6 here. I could go queen a2 and, and just push through with c4, but I'm giving up the b4 square for now, so I, so I didn't want to do that. So I just played rook fc1, he played rook fd8, and now I was struggling for a plan. In my mind, my pieces are optimally placed. I don't want to play a move like knight e5. Uh, I'm not really sure what that achieves. Uh, the only thing I can see is that if I go, for example, I go knight e5, and then when I go queen a2, he plays knight e6, I can take it. But why would I want to take it? Well, I would want to take it because I don't want to allow knight b4. So, for example, let, let's play knight e5. And the nothing more move for black, and I go queen a2. Now knight c6 is forced. I don't see another move. Now I can take. Let's say rook takes and c4. And what have I achieved? Well, I've given black a passed pawn. I've given myself a passed pawn in the future. But this idea I don't think is good because this bishop is controlling the b1 square. So I don't see a way to utilize the the b file. Uh, before I neutralize the bishop. So in this position I play the move bishop d1, which gives up the d3 square. But in my mind, if if the bishop occupies the, the d3 square and I chase it away and it transfers to, to b5, then it's sort of trapped and c4 would be in some positions threatening to win a piece. More importantly, if something like this happens, let's say the bishop is perfectly safe, let's say the pawn is on a5, doesn't matter. I will be able to play e4. So I think bishop d1 is a good idea. Uh, I, I wanted to occupy this diagonal so that I can control the b1 square and so that I can push e4. Uh, I don't think the engine says it's a good move. The engine wants to play rook a4. Fine. Uh, rook a4, yeah, th this idea is actually strange. Uh, I was thinking about rook a2. I didn't consider rook a4. And then the idea is to play either queen a1 or, or, or rook a1. And when the knight goes back to c6, you go queen a1 anyway. And you try to put pressure on the pawn on a6 eventually. I did not consider that. So I played bishop d1, which is okay. My opponent played knight e4, trading pieces. Now, I sort of have superfluous knights unless I want to use the e5 square. So I took bishop takes and played knight to d2. Now again, if bishop to d3... Uh, then, then bishop to c2, and th this bishop is going to have to choose a diagonal. Whatever happens, I'm going to be playing either e4 or c4. So my opponent played knight c4, and this, I think, really has to be taken. Uh, I took... He played dc4. Uh, if he plays rook c4, I think I can safely play b4 in some positions, or I can either con consider playing a move like queen e2, forcing the rook to move away, for example, queen a2, the rook moves away, and I go c4. And in this position, I'm in time to play bishop c2, and then rook b1, and I think this should be slightly more pleasant for me than for my opponent. But he took with the d-pawn. And now I, I played b4, and the reason I played b4 is that I thought I had a huge advantage here because of the a5 square, which is true in a sense. I have a good square on a5, but I have to trade correctly in order to utilize that. My opponent played bishop d6, and I was happy to exchange the dark squared bishops, because my pawns are all on dark squares, and I really have no way to use my bishop in the attack. And then bishop c2. The reason I played bishop c2 is so that I can finally play e4. Uh, I don't think there's a good alternative to to either trading or allowing me to trade. If my opponent retreats along this diagonal, then I'm just playing e4, for example, e4. And the bishop on c6 has to be a very bad piece now. Okay, he played queen c6, allowing me to trade, queen takes, and I played rook a5. Uh, the idea here is firstly to occupy the fifth rank. Secondly, uh, to try and play rook to c5, to challenge the rook on c8, and if my opponent allows it, 
Okay, I made a mistake on the very next move, but that was the first idea. The second idea was I want to play e4, but I need to trade queens first, and I don't want to allow the queen into d3. For example, if I play queen to c2 and he plays queen to d3, I can never take this. This position, I think, is just horrible for me. I don't think I can hold, because if something like this happens, he can just double and eventually everything is going to crumble and he's going to have two passed pawns. So I played rook a5, and he played rook d5. And now I do have a big advantage. Had I simply followed through with my plan, I would have had a great position. So the idea here is to, well, trade queens. So queen b1, he probably should decline the queen trade at this point. Uh, queen to d3 doesn't work now because I can play rook c5. So if, if the same idea happens here, then I just go rook c5. Whoa, not rook d5, rook c5. And I'm just going to pick up the pawn on d3. So after queen b1, uh, he has to move the queen away somewhere. And now I go rook c5. And if this is ever taken, regardless which rook he takes with, this pawn is now fixed. And it's not easy to defend. And this probably is a winning advantage, practically speaking. So, I messed up here. I took on d5. I should have either played queen b1 or rook c5, but I, I took on d5 thinking that if, if pawn takes, uh, then I can get my other uh, rook to a5 and to c5, and it's going to be putting pressure on the d5 pawn, which is all correct. And if queen takes, which happened in the game, I can play rook a1, and again, play rook a5. In this position, he played rook to c6, which I think is a mistake, because he is finally allowing me to occupy this diagonal, so I played queen c2 instantly. Uh, and now I have control over the position. So the threat here is to play rook a5 uh, and, and rook c5. He played f5. I... I don't know what that has to do with the position. It prevents e4, but e4 isn't the main threat. And after f5, the pawn on e6 is weak as well. So f this position, I'm sure a grandmaster would win 10 out of 10 times against, a, against another grandmaster. I wasn't sure I was going to win, but I knew that I was better. Okay, rook a5. Uh, b5. And this is exactly the weakness I wanted to provoke, uh, because now the pawn on a6 is weak and fixed, the pawn on e6 is weak and fixed, so I just went back. And now the idea is to trade queens, get my king into the position, and play e4. Uh, he allowed me to play e4 straight away uh, he, by playing queen to d8. He should not have allowed this. Uh, had he played something different, perhaps I'd have gone f3 and d4 anyway, but since he played queen d8 voluntarily, I just played e4. Of course, if that's taken, my queen attacks the rook, attacks the pawn, and my queen is going to be sitting on e5, for example. Uh, I don't know. Something like this. And this is the best queen in the world. And eventually, either I'm going to have a great attack and much more uh, active pieces, or one of these two is going to drop. Not to mention that queen b5 is, is an idea in some positions, if, for example, the queen is on a8. So he cannot take. He played queen g5. And here, I, I actually thought for some time, and I was slightly afraid of the move e5. Um, giving up a pawn, for example, if it's, uh, I, I don't know, let's play a nothing move. e5, and if I take it, he plays rook g6. And regardless of what I do, let's say I play f3, she can go f4, and I wasn't sure about this position, I think black could be winning here, but maybe it's equal, maybe I can hold, maybe there is no attack, but I definitely didn't want to allow that, because that's the only source of counterplay. So in my mind, if I can prevent counterplay, I have a great position, so I played e5. And after this move, I was in complete control of the game. And I was really happy. Now, two weaknesses are fixed. I have a way in for my king uh, along the dark squares here. And 
I liked my position. He played queen d8, I played queen e2. The idea is queen f3. I don't want to play queen f3 straight away because he's going to take ruin my pawn structure. It's going to be really hard to win. So my plan was to get my king to g3. There is nothing he can do about that. So king to g3. And after g6, I played queen f3. Now he really should decline the queen trade. Uh, that being said, if he does decline it with, for example, queen to d8, I've just improved all of my pieces. So he allowed me to take. Okay, now he got rid of the weakness on e6, but I have a passed pawn on e5, and there's a weakness on a6 still. And this position is completely winning. Okay, I played king f4, rook e6, and here, if you want, you can pause the video and try to find a plan. Uh, I'll show you which plan I went for. There's a better plan in the position. Okay, so in the game, I played h4, which is okay. The game is still completely winning. Uh, and after h5, I played king g5. And my idea was to play f3 and g4, and eventually either crash through with my rook along the f-file, or put my rook on the e1 square and eventually play e6. Uh, there's a better plan in this position. And that plan is g4. I didn't even consider that. Uh, after g4, the pawn has to be taken because I'm threatening to take on f5. So takes, king takes. And after king f7, uh, black is basically forced to wait because the rook has to stay on the 6th rank and th there's nothing active uh, he could do. Of course, g5 and h5 lose on the spot. So f4, king g7, h4, king f7, h5. Now again, this has to be taken. King h5. And if black tries something like rook g6, you simply go king h4. You cannot go f4 straight away because... Uh, f5, excuse me, straight away because rook g5 wins the pawn. So king h4. And it's as simple as that. Black waits, you go rook e1 and you go f5, you go e6 and, and you win the game. Two passed pawns, too much for, for black to handle. And moreover, absolutely no counterplay for black. The rook cannot get to the third rank. a5 doesn't work. Uh, and, and that's it. So that would have been way simpler. I played h4, which is still okay. And we reach this position. We're shuffling around a bit. I'm trying to optimize all of my pieces before I play g4. And then I played g4. I should also say that... Uh, yeah, king g5 was move 40, so I had plenty of time. We both had plenty of time. Okay, g4. Has to be taken. Takes, 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 takes. Okay. Now, I was briefly considering uh, something other than taking, uh, or I was considering taking with my rook, so as not to misplace my king, but there's no point to that. I can always go back to g5. He played rook e6. And now, the idea I had was to get my king to g5 and eventually put my rook on the e-file and put black into Zugzwang. And he has to move something. I've achieved what I wanted. So whatever he does, he has to move one of his pieces. The only thing black could consider is king h7. But against king h7, I would have played h5. Now, I think the pawn has to be taken, so takes, takes. And the idea is here that I won a crucial tempo and I can approach the, the black rook and this I feel has to be game over because my king is so much better because the rook basically cannot move. If, if the rook moves, I don't move my king over, I just play e6 and that's it. If my king can get to, to e5, for example, like this, I, I don't know, I'm just playing random moves. If I can do this, then, then I win, obviously. And I don't think there's a way to prevent that. So I'd have played that had he played king h7. But in the game, he played rook e8. And I thought, okay, that, that's it. I go e6. This was my idea all along. Uh, I wanted to move the pawn forward and get my rook to e5 and win the game. He played rook e7. And I waited with rook e5. Now, rook e5 is still completely winning, and the position is fine, but rook e5 is imprecise, and it loses most of my advantage, believe it or not. And the reason is very instructive. So, what I thought I had to do is put black into, into Zugzwang again, and after rook e5, 
he has to play rook e8. Of course, if he moves the king anywhere, my king is coming in. It doesn't matter where he moves the king. So he cannot move the king. Uh, I'm not even taking the pawn. If, if he plays something like this, I'm just, just playing king f6. And it's complete zugzwang. So he has to move the rook, and the only move is rook to e8. If he moves the rook along the se second rank, I just queen my pawn. So he only has one move. And I thought, okay, now I go e7, and the game is winning. And we will get back to this in a second. Okay, so e6, rook e7, and I played rook e5. Why is rook e5 a mistake? Rook e5 is a mistake because I don't want my rook on e5. I want my king on e5. So I should have played anything but rook e5. For example, uh, I don't know, rook e1. I can just wait. Again, he has to play rook e8. Okay, and I think it's important to misplace the rook slightly. It's better to have the rook on e8 than on e7. But my next move could have been played instead of waiting. Instead of rook e1, I could have played h5 straight away. The idea behind h5 is the, the instructive part. You want your king on e5, but you cannot get to e5. So you sacrifice a pawn. This has to be taken. And now you don't take back. You play king f5 and game over. Black should resign. I, d I don't know what black does, let's say here, I can just do this, and black resigns, this is game over. The h pawn is not going anywhere. So in this position, of course, yeah, I could have played h5 straight away, it doesn't matter. Uh, I didn't see that, even though I should have seen it. So I played rook e5, and here was my calculation. And I, I hope you can follow this. If not, you can pause the video and try to figure it out by yourself. But I tried to figure everything out before I played e6. So in this position, I'll show you what I was calculating. So I was calculating e6, rook e7, rook e5, rook e8, e7, king f7. Uh, wait, just a second. Yeah, okay, okay, sorry. So I go e6, he goes rook e7, uh, I go rook e5, he goes rook e8, I go e7, king f7, and now all I have to do is wait and force him to take the pawn. So I go rook e1, he plays rook takes e7, rook takes e7, king takes e7, king takes g6, he goes a5, I go h5. Okay, and he plays a takes b4, h6, uh, b3, h7, b2, h8 equals queen. That was my calculation, and I thought, okay, that's winning. And then when we reached this position, I decided to double check. And here's the problem. So, I wait with my rook. So rook e1, rook e7, rook e7, king e7, king g6, a5, h5, a b, h6, b3, h7, b2, h8 equals queen, b1, queen with check. And when I saw that, I wanted to throw up. And I immediately knew that I threw my advantage away, most likely, by playing e7 prematurely. So I chose the completely wrong plan. Uh, it, in this position, this position is plus 7 for white. If you know that you have to play h5 and here and get your king across, which I should have played instantly. I don't think I'm that weak in the end game that I wouldn't get my king up the board if I could. Obviously, I thought I just thought rook e5 was winning, so I wasn't looking for a better idea which for me is very instructive. So let me show you the line I'm, I'm talking about, which I in the end didn't go for. So had I waited, so takes, 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 a5. Uh, I cannot take on a5, that probably would be a draw, at least in my mind it was a draw, and, and that's true. So if I play b a5, he plays b4, I take here, 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 and draw agreed, I cannot win this position. 
So after a5, my idea was h5. Of course, if black plays a4, black loses. Uh, that's easy. But since I took on g6, black and queen we check. So takes. Of course, I don't have time to take because I'm one move slower. So here, 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 here. Queen, check. And this I'm actually losing because black has another queen coming up. So when he played king f7, I, I just... I was really, really, really annoyed because I knew that my position was winning and I was outplaying him in the late middle game and in the end game. So now I have to find, had to find a different idea. So the only other sensible move I can see is rook takes d5 with the idea of taking the a6 pawn. If I can take the a6 pawn, at least I'm not going to lose. Now, I, I had no idea whether this was winning or not if I take on d5, but I thought it, it probably wasn't. So I took on d5. He has to take on e7 and I have to play rook d6. In this position there are no tricks with a5. He has no checks, so he has to play rook e3. And this is all forced, I think we, we, we just played instantly. So I took on a6. Uh, he Yeah, here he made a mistake. He took on c3. Instead he should have checked me on g3, I think. Uh, I, I'm not sure. I think he should have forced my king away. But he took on c3. And in this position, I played rook f6, forcing him to make a decision. Uh, I wanted him to get away from the g6 pawn. And it's a tempo which I, I can afford. I wanted to play rook b6 anyway, why not misplace his king? So king e7, rook b6. And here he checked me on g3. I went to f4, he played rook h3. And yeah, after king g5, we agreed to a draw. Uh, there is nothing I can do here. Uh, if I take here, I cannot move my king up because I lose a rook. So I, I would have to go back. And he just checks me again. I go here and he does something, I don't know, like, like this. And this should just be a draw. So yeah, uh, this was a very painful game uh, for me. So in this position, e6 is fine. It's the only way to win, I think. Although I could have continued with just waiting and playing h5 i think that's a sensible way to play as well but when we got this position i should have just played anything and then h5 and the idea is to get my king to d6 and win the game so yeah we can game play by by me in this one and hopefully you've learned from it i know i have i've been looking at this position in my head for a week now or for two weeks since the game I keep thinking about it when I go to bed or when I go for a walk or whatever. Okay, hope you liked the game, hope you learned something. Let me know what you think and stay tuned for more chess. Bye-bye.